Hey guys, welcome back to Lords of the Fallen. This is episode 7. You will see these wonderful trees, which are probably related to the trees from Bloodborne somehow. But who knows. Here's the door that we got Yetka's key for, the key to the catacombs. And in we go. Um, this is my first attempt at recording this video. If I fail miserably, then... Uh, then I'll start from inside the catacombs, but if not, then you'll know that this is the first actual attempt. So here we are in uh, a mid to late game area of the game, and even though we're in early game equipment. So this is basically your Valley of the Drakes equivalent. So down here, everything is murderously difficult. And while I could beat the game without dying, I, I prefer coming down here for some entertainment and to pick up some good loot in the early game. There is a boss down here. But if you kill it, you can't actually advance further, so the purpose of killing it is nebulous. Uh, unless you want loot and experience and so on, but... We'll we'll, kill, we'll deal with him later. I'm pointing in his general direction right here. But, down we go to see some dialogue. Hey! Over here! Shh! You wake it up! Let me out of here! The jailer's key is right behind you! No! If you open his door... The sound will wake up the beast in my cell. What is going on here? We've both been trapped inside this prison because of him. He's the murderer, but he keeps putting the blame on me. That's because you are the murderer. Why not just let both of you out? The sound of the door will wake up the beast behind us. Only one of us will make it out alive. The one with the open cell door. I'm not letting you out. You can rot in there for all I care. I hope you rot alive, you bastard. I put a curse on you and everyone you've ever loved. So, uh... I'm just visiting the dialogue options here. Hey, you... The... Be quiet. The thing here is you can either open one of the doors with uh, the key in this chest, naturally, as they mentioned. Or we could pull this lever over here, and that will open I'll all the doors. Sound. If you wake up the infested, I won't be able to get away. But if you engage in combat with, say, the guy on the other side of this fence, it will uh, just wake up the monsters anyway, so... Apparently the optimal choice is to open this door. Because if you open this guy's door, then he'll go murder quest NPC. So, here's your low trick with terrible voice acting. So, <laughs> we'll free this guy and kill the monster behind him. We also got some experience for it, so I guess it's worth, worth doing just for that. Uh, okay. So now we'll we'll open every door because why not? Now we're actually very close to where the boss is, but that's not really what I'm interested in. But we'll see that the the guy on the left, whose cell door did not open for some reason, dropped a magic leech item. So long ago, the cultists used this to to eat their opponents' hearts to absorb their magicka. This trinket causes a similar effect without unbearable stench and unnecessary mess. I believe what this does is when you attack enemies, your mana regenerates, so it's quite useful. And... well, he's not here. Alright, this large fat man on our left, even fatter than Kesslo, is uh... he's called a Houndmaster, so he's a 4-3, give a beast, plus 2-2, two, two, and taunt. And... they're, they're basically just fat archers. They're not super difficult, but if I get stunlocked by the, the arrows as I want to do lately, then they could do some do good damage to me. And we're not at the uh, the running phase of this area quite yet. Oh, I actually dexed it. Uh, it's gonna kill me. Yeah, okay. And here's his... Here's his dog. Which I didn't quite kill, so he might get me before I heal. No. Okay, we're good. 
There's always the hit, hit animations when you get hit in this game. It's not that obvious, so that can be frustrating. I think this will open these two doors. Yeah. And there should be something here. But maybe not. <laughs> nope. There might be a secret I'm forgetting about, but that's alright. So, here's a lever that's very important, so don't, don't forget to pull this one. I'll explain what it does. Well, I guess you can explain it now. It, it opens a part of the boss gate down below, but the first time I played this game I didn't realize it was there, so... It just took me forever to find a way to... get to the boss. Or, how do I unlock the boss door? Please. This area is extremely dense and extremely confusing, so it was anybody's guess where the is anybody there? Be. Please help. These human skulls we're picking up, they, it says quest item and help. they're for quest a little bit later in the game. You you are not one of them, are you? Please, please help me. Let me guess. You want me to open your cell and then kill me. It will be easy. Just find the lever nearby to open the door. Then, put me out of my misery. Sounds easy enough. All right. Uh, I guess I should have said the other dialogue after. That's okay. So that guy wants us to kill him because he's going to turn into an infested. So. But we have to go find the key, which he says is in the, the warden's office over here. And we got it. There we go. So you, so you did a, a very sizable amount of damage, despite only shooting me once and maybe poking me once. So it's very dangerous even killing the easy enemies in this area. But here's the warden's office. And here we have the, uh, the missing lever. Lever handle. There it is. No. That one has a lever, so we know that's wrong. This one also has a lever, so we know that's wrong. And this one does not have a lever. But now it does. Hurry up and do it! I can feel my eyesight fade. Alright, well, we'll just kill him. So. <laughs> Doesn't need to worry too much. 1500 experience just for murdering a guy. And a spell point shard, which is very nice. We can actually uh, get a spell now, but I'm not sure if I have enough faith to use it. But that's the main reason we were coming over here, was to get this shield, which is our first major upgrade uh, in the, uh, the light shield category, which I feel is the best shields in the game, but this is the second in that group, and this one blocks 100% of damage. You can also see that's a, uh... You can see that the, uh... The imagery of the, the shield means that it's a Rogar weapon, or... Kind of like a Deirdrick weapon in the Elder Scrolls series, so it looks a little more demonic. And it's also orange, the text is orange, so that means that there's a special effect. In this case it says, blocks physical projectiles effectively. I don't know what that means exactly, but... Maybe... <laughs> Uh, physical projectiles take no stamina off now, or something like that? Who can say? But, now we have a, a shield that blocks 100% physical damage, so we're in pretty good shape. But that's not all we're down here for. So, on we move. I'm not gonna tap this checkpoint, just in case the video... I go too long in the video. And that way I can retry. You can see that these has have a, uh... A fiery projectile, so that's why my <laughs> castle is just, just casually sitting here on fire. That's why. And even though I blocked it, it still set me on fire, so. Not all is well. Uh. Living Legend. Huh. I could have sworn that was. Okay, that is the chest that has the cold blood armor in it. It just didn't say it. Sometimes. There's like four slots in the lower left to show items, and some chests have like six items in them. This one only had three and it only showed two, so 
Don't ask me why that happened. So now we have now we have some very nice helm helmet armor, but it's not, and it actually weighs less than the hot blood armor. So this is one of the best hats in the game for weight weight to defense uh, ratio. And of course, I I just made that up. So don't make too no make fun of me too much. Uh, we only have one blood vial left, so this will be rough going now. Let's see what this, this lore says. Oh man. Evil is gone, but what remains of the person is different. We need to look closer, and personally, I don't know how to treat these people. They seem to behave normally. They walk, talk, but in some way they just seem unreal. So the enemy I just aggroed is one of the most difficult enemies in the game, and I was going to talk about him briefly, but since I aggroed him, I might as well try to avoid him. Here's his little brother, but we don't need to fight him either. Here's uh, some more wonderful archers. I'm going to go kill the other one before I heal. Just seems advisable. I'm not sure I'm so low on stuff. Are we gonna die? Nah, I think we gotta be okay. Alright, now at this point it's just gonna be a straight suicide run, and hopefully I can get to my objective, which is the checkpoint on the other end of the area. See that guy almost took off half my life in one hit. That was the large shield bearer again. Uh, we found it. Okay. This is uh, the checkpoint, so... I, I guess I probably have enough time to discuss the large enemies if he comes over here. He did. So, I'll, I guess I'll do it in this video. These guys are very, very dangerous. And a lot of people have trouble with them because if you try to shield bash them, they're just neutrally standing there. See, he took out 80% of my life there in one hit. Um, if you try to shield bash them like this, it'll just be repelled. So you want to wait for them to slowly walk towards you before you start the attack. Uh, I don't think I actually have enough time to kill the enemy, but we'll at least start the shield bash and then I'll end the video. So there you go. You do that, then you hit him twice, then you immediately back off. And you repeat this ad nauseum. If I was a warrior, this would be a little easier because you can deal a bit more damage. But uh, I'm going to get out of here. Just to reset the enemies, and I'll see you guys next time for more more catacombs. And I hope you enjoyed the video.